I'd like to talk to you today about the Hasselblad Addix 1D camera. This is a camera that was announced over a year ago and has just started shipping in the last few weeks. Today, I'm in early January of 2017, and the shipments from what I hear are rather low. And there's a lot of other news that will be coming our way from Hasselblad in the very near future. But let's concentrate today on the X1D camera. Hasselblad took the medium format market by surprise with the announcement of this camera. As in the past, most of the medium format cameras have been rather on the bulky large size, such as the H6 or the Phase 1 line. And what they did here was make a mirrorless camera. That's right, this is the medium format mirrorless camera. You can see, and I'll take the lens off so you can see that, it's a rather thin camera. And it's actually a very lightweight camera. It's a beautiful camera in many ways. It's engineered very well, very Hasselblad-ish in the design of the camera. Lenses bayonet right on. I've got a 45 millimeter lens, uh, 4.5, and a 93.2 uh, lens uh, as part of the kit that I was sent. I'm working with the, the release software, the first release software. So I'm working with software that is um, up to date at this point. And it's uh, been quite a pleasure to work with. Hasselblad sent me this camera prior to going down to Antarctica, and I've had it now for just about four weeks. Had the chance to test it in Antarctica, as well as uh, some images uh, here at home, which you'll see in the review below. And I'm actually quite impressed with the camera, but there are some things that are a little different about it. And before we get too far into that, let's talk a little bit about and show you what this camera is all about. One of the first steps is the battery. A battery is a new kind of battery, and it slides into a compartment underneath. Uh, there's no latch to open up, no lid, and it just snaps in very easily like that. What's really nice is actually if you wanted to release the battery and you hit the battery release, it doesn't come all the way out. It stops, so it's not going to fall on the ground. To take it all the way out, you just push in a little bit, and then you can pull it back out. So uh, that's where the battery compartment sits. It's in a grip, and the grip feels very nice around the hand, as you can see. It feels very good. It, it fits well in the palm of my big, beefy hands. And uh, typically, I would be palming the camera like this, so my hand sits very nicely on the focus ring and fits very nicely on the controls. The controls for the camera are very, very minimalistic. There's only this controls up here and a few of the buttons in the back. The majority of the control for this camera comes from the touch display. So the touch display is where you set most of everything that uh, you set as far as f-stops and ISO, and it's very clever, very, very well done. So let's take a look at that. First thing I do is power it up, and powering up takes a, a couple seconds. It's not very fast, and that's kind of disturbing. So we'll just kind of give it a second. You can see it's powering up, powering up, powering up, powering up. It's about five to seven seconds to power up and when you power it up you get a menu and from this menu you basically set up whatever you would want. I can do a touch here and I can zoom in and go to my ISO so I'm going to set for 400 ISO. I can touch on the f-stop and set it to say f8. I have the number of exposures, my SD cards and there's two SD cards by the way and they sit in a little compartment uh, right back here seals up very nicely, it's weather sealed. And uh, there's two SD cards and it tells you which card is the active card. You can uh, shoot RAWs and JPEGs with this camera. Um, and I've got 212 exposures showing. I want to turn this over to single mode drive, so by just touching the icon from continuous I'll go to single. I have my metering which is center weighted, spot, or center spot. Uh, I'm going to go with center weighted. I wish that there was an average metering, which actually took into account the whole screen, uh, but there isn't. Maybe it's something they can do in the future. So you just touch and basically everything's set up and you're ready to go. You can actually turn live view on and look at it through live view, or you can look through the viewfinder. It has a very nice bright viewfinder. Push the exposure button down halfway and you activate autofocus. There's 35 autofocus points and to reach the autofocus points, essentially you take 
the autofocus button, you hold that down for about three seconds while you're in live view. And you're given uh, 35 little squares and you pick the square you want and it turns orange and that is where your autofocus point is going to be. Then hit your exposure button again, look through there, goes into autofocus very quickly and we shoot. Now what you just heard was a very unusual shutter. This is something that I find very strange with this camera. There is a shutter lag. Okay, This is not an instantaneous uh, exposure release. So listen to what happens. One, two, three. So it's kind of like did it did it did it did it. Here we do it again. So what you have is the diaphragm shutting down. Uh, you've got the shutter opening and closing and taking its image. So it's very hard to determine uh, when you actually have the exposure or which one of the clicks is where the exposure actually takes place. So when you take a picture, focuses and clicks. And uh, you get your exposure, it's quite nice. And if you wanted to see things on the back, you basically tap. And for every tap on the bottom, you can change the histogram from just an overall average histogram. In playback mode, if I wanted to take a look at an image, I push the play button, which is up top, and I can scroll through my images very easily. I can double tap on an image, and then I can scroll around the image to check its focus. Very clever the way that works, pretty cool. Uh, it works very effectively. Let's talk about the dials and uh, on top of the camera. You have auto focus, manual focus selection to the left, right to the, the right of the viewfinder, uh, very leftmost button. And you've got ISO and white balance. So by touching any one of these, they activate a screen and you can accordingly make your adjustments very quickly using the uh, wheels. Um, and you can go from autofocus to manual focus very quickly. And remember too, on the autofocus, if you hold the button for three seconds, it pops up the focusing grid where you can select the autofocus point you want to focus with. Uh, there is no continuous autofocus tracking. There aren't a lot of things that we're accustomed to. Uh, as we see in some of our other camera systems that we use. So uh, this is kind of limited, but uh, it, it is allowing you at least 35 focus points so you can pick a focus point if you want to use it. On the top of the camera, we also have a recess dial. And this is our dial for selecting our exposure modes. There's manual, aperture, shutter, P for priority. Um, you've got three custom settings, a manual setting and a movie setting that you can go to. And as I twist any one of these to select them, you can see that a dial pops up on the rear screen and it just allows you to see what you're doing so that you don't have to like turn the camera backwards. So if you're on a tripod or something and you want to change modes, you can do that easily enough. Also, my power button is up top here. I have an accessory shoe and I have two plastic uh, little areas up here. One, I'm told, handles the Wi-Fi so that you can shoot directly into uh, uh, any of the different apps. And also one is for GPS. So you've got a GPS transmitter and uh, Wi-Fi built in. On the other buttons we have here, we've got to the right of the viewfinder, auto exposure lock and auto focus lock. Uh, very easy to, to, to reach with your thumb. So as you become familiar with this camera, there is not a lot you can't reach if you're really good with the, the fingers of reaching it. And then, of course, I can actually never take my eye off the viewfinder, open it up, and actually turn that knob and press it back in. And then I've got my other two buttons down here. There are a series of buttons along the right edge of the display screen. And it's not a tilt display screen, unfortunately, but it is touch, and it's a very nice touch display screen. I've got a play button. I've got a select button, star button and I got menu buttons and so forth. So uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Actually, this camera is so easy to use that you can actually set it up uh, very easily without having to go and read a manual. It's kind of intuitive, much like the uh, iPhone uh, that we've become so accustomed to is. The camera also has two dials, a front and a rear dial. And these control the settings such as aperture and shutter speed uh, for you. Let's go over the final things about this camera. There is one more little hatch right here, 
and that holds the HDMI, the headphone jack, the microphone jack, and a USB-C uh, plug for uh, doing tethered shooting. Anytime that you want to uh, get into the control mode and the control menu, it just pulled down like a window shade, and then you can touch what you'd like to do. One thing I wanted to show you, if I can bring down this, is go into what I call the uh, continuous mode, the continuous drive mode. So I'm going to uh, touch the drive button, and I'm going to turn it into continuous, and I'm going to just let it go. This is not what you might call a speed demon of a camera in continuous mode. Hey, listen. Maybe just a frame a second. So it's not super fast and it begins to slow down as you can see now as the buffer is being filled up. So uh, it's a little strange that way. So anyway, that's continuous. It's not a speed demon, so don't expect to be photographing sports with this camera or anything along those lines. Um, but it's a nice camera. Let's take a look at the uh, other lenses. I'm going to take this lens off. Hasselblad is uh, only shipping uh, two lenses right now, the uh, two that I've mentioned, uh, the 90, uh, which is I'm putting on here now. You uh, have a red dot, and you take the red dot and you align it to the red dot at the very top, and you just twist a quarter of a turn. Uh, lens shades come on and off very easily. You line up arrows and twist, and away you go. So, focus, shoot. I'm going back to single mode now. Remember to do that, I just pull down my menu, hit my drive icon, go to single. Now I'm at single. Focus. There you go. Now, I don't know what click took the picture, but in any case, that's uh, how we operate. Uh, there's also a general menu back here. This does all the settings for the camera. Once again, uh, there are no extra push buttons for menus. You just select what you'd like, and you got format the card. You've got autofocus, battery, power, timing, RAW, and JPEG, which is what I've been shooting with and um, movie camera mode. You can set the quality for the movie camera mode. So it's pretty cool. It works. It's a very basic kind of camera at this point. Uh, let me tell you some of the things about this camera that I've run into problems with. First off, uh, even working with the final release software, I had a number of occasions where I could not do autofocus. It just would not lock on. Uh, these were shiny objects, uh, various colors. I was trying to shoot cars in a car showroom, and I just could not get the focus to click in. It also doesn't focus well on chrome, specifically chrome, even if I had black areas where I've got uh, some sort of contrast and so forth. I had a lot of problems uh, doing the focus. However, it is brilliant when it comes to manual focus, and in those cases, I just switched over to manual focus, and the image in the viewfinder enlarges, and you can uh, make your adjustments with really good detail. It's a very great screen as far as the viewfinder screen and the rear display screen goes, so it's very easy to uh, do the focusing. Um, I had a number of times where, for no reason at all, uh, exposure would go off, where it should be, say, 125th at f8. Uh, I got some funky exposures where everything was overexposed. Um, so there still seems to be uh, uh, firmware glitches that might have to be resolved with the camera. But let me say this. Um, I traveled with four batteries, and I needed four batteries. The battery doesn't last very long in the camera, at least the way I shoot. Um, but it is a compact system. Imagine right now, look at the way that's set up. That's a very small space. And I could take another lens and put it here, this is a backpacker camera. So you could take backpacking medium format into the field to shoot with. So it would be very, very nice to do that with. Um, this is something I really like about this camera. So if I'm a landscape photographer and I don't really care about the shutter lag, which there is a shutter lag, and I want a small compact system, I can take this camera with me and accomplish it very, very nicely. 
I can only imagine that, you know, one more lens here and one more lens here, I could put it into a think tank uh, bag insert, maybe that large, and probably be under 10 pounds with an additional two lenses for the whole setup. And that would uh, do very nicely in the field. Uh, throw in a couple batteries, uh, and I would be in really good shape. Bottom line is, I really like this camera, but it has a way to go, in my opinion. I think the firmware needs to come up uh, another notch or two. It would be nice if it would actually shoot a little quicker without some of the lag. But on the plus side, and there's a lot of pluses, it's fast for autofocus when the autofocus finds its mark. It's easy to work with. Very, very easy to change settings and make settings and, and set the camera almost to the point of being intuitively easy. They've done a brilliant job with the menus. All the menus can either be controlled by the touch screen and or by the dials uh, on the side here. So it works very effectively and you'd get to be very good at that after a while. So bottom line is this, I like the camera. Uh, it's hard to get. Uh, obviously with the introduction of the camera, they made an awful lot of uh, noise and an awful lot of people responded in a positive nature with orders. And even being January, they're saying still that it's going to be the end of April before Hasselblad can catch up with all the back orders, not to mention they'll be in a constant back order situation because anybody ordering now through April is going to have to be put on back order status. So I would presume, unless they find a way to really bump up production, back orders are going to be on this camera for quite some time. Uh, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. So... I'll give this camera a pretty good rating as far as I'm concerned. I've enjoyed shooting with it. It's been fun. Uh, it works. It's convenient. It's very easy to handheld. So unlike the H6 or the Phase 1 XF, which is very heavy, and they can be handheld, this one is uh, more conducive to handheld shooting. There is no image stabilization, so be aware of that, obviously. Uh, you're going to want to use a tripod. I did not have a cable release, so when I was doing tripod shots, I just set the self-timer up for five seconds and it worked flawlessly. Very easy to set up with that uh, easy to use menu. So give it a look, give it a try. I've had a lot of fun with it, um, but I am not going to put this on my purchase list. I'm going to sit back and wait. There's a lot of other things happening in the marketplace, as you all know, and let's wait and see uh, what else comes around before I decide where I'm going to write the check, but this is certainly a worthy contender and uh, anybody that gets it's not going to be disappointed. The problem is, when are you going to get it? So anyway, this is Kevin Raber and I appreciate you taking a look at this video and the review that's below and I'll see you on the Luminous Landscape.